Jesus name we pray Amen. because of your prayers your friends have received mercy Amen. Thank you, Lord. we give you praise we give you glory. and father we thank you for your word the Bible says the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding to the simple speak to every heart we ask you in Jesus name we pray praise God look at him and say I have obtained mercy amen praise the Lord all right all of you in Fort City now you're tired already I know you've been doing some services okay praise the Lord I have obtained mercy all of you online write in the comment section I have obtained mercy amen um but you do you have the hashtag for the Twitter right now do you tell me what it is what okay so during the teaching if something strikes you you can put you can put it on Twitter and just tweet it and then hashtag PB speaks we don't want to call it someone lets people run away from it so want to get the word into them without oh wow I didn't even know it was a pastor and the word begins to change them PB speaks or hashtag PB speaks you can just push that hashtag on Twitter praise the Lord hallelujah well just for you to know that this is our month of mercy and this is our month of mercy this is our month of mercy and things are bit, going to be different this month this month is going to be a bit different one one of the things we're doing is 30 we're having 30 days of random act of kindness you know 30 days of random act of kindness praise the Lord so what does that look like let me tell you what it looks like so every day I'm gonna post something you can do online that can bless somebody else so I, I will post today maybe tomorrow buy lunch for someone and all you have to do make sure you do it to someone that cannot do it back to you most of the time I mean sometimes you have to do it to your friend of yours so buy lunch for someone what you can you do so you just go to Chicken Republic order like this plate of food for one five and your gates man that always opens the gate and just give it to him you know you know I can be like buy drinks for people and just go to the office and buy 20 you know 20 drinks and give to everybody in the office and and someone says why because the Bible says blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy Glory. hallelujah Amen. yeah it's, it's gonna be so wonderful what this is what you have to do every Sunday every Sunday make sure you bring a gift to church buy a perfume look for a pay, nice pair of sleepers look for something you've not worn before wrap it and when you come to church don't give it to anybody just put it under the seat next to you and when I tell people every Sunday every Sunday I'm gonna bring it we're gonna begin gifts I said look under your seat I'm like oh wow and look at their face and like that's the miracle and that's the miracle right there and it's just it's just practicing the random kindness what, what we're going to do, myself and some of our ladies, I, I'm going to go to the supermarket, Abraham, go to all the supermarket, and I'm going, to draw the, I'm going to draw the circle of mercy. You know what circle of mercy? I'll draw a circle on the floor and say, whatever you take that fits in that circle is paid for. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, so it's going to be 30 days of random, of what do you call it, random kindness. It, listen to me, people. People are going through a lot. There are three kinds of people when it comes to problems. People that create problems, people that complain about problems, people that solve problems. Choose to be among the solution, not among those that complain or create problems. Simple thing like you take an Uber and you give the Uber 1,000 naira extra. You will not die. Simple thing that you buy drinks for all of the friends in the office and do it a lot for those that cannot pay you back. You can do it for your best friend because you know she'll do it back to you. But do it for those that cannot pay you back. So you come to church next Sunday, look for one pair of shoes you've not worn, you've not worn some kind of material, some kind of perfume, you know, put somebody and just put it, just put it under the seat. And you don't even have to tell the person I put it there. And just look under the seat and someone picks up and they go, wow, oh wow, see how God blessed me. And, it, and, and you do something that inspired them to think about God. Praise the Lord. What do you think about this? Yeah. And as I do all of these things, send me a video, send me a picture. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what people are saying. Some people are going to say, look, why are you doing this? You know, some of them, sometimes it's to write. Some of you just need to spend 10, 20 minutes with someone that is sick that you know. You've been so much in a hurry. You've forgotten about your aunt, your aunt that is sick. Just go and say and say, I've just had to give the gift of my time just to sit down with you and listen to you. Glory to God. We must keep on practicing kindness. We must keep on practicing kindness. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God today? So next Sunday is Easter Sunday, so that's a good time to us to Easter Sunday. I hope that you'll be extra vacant and you bring all your friends. You know, come with a nice Easter dress and bring all of your friends. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. And um, yeah, yeah. Have you seen the pictures from the Lekki Church? Have you seen all the things that's going on? I want to really thank you again for all of you that gave generously to support all we do. Um, yeah, look at, look at. I wanted to notice that the Lekki Church is as tall as the next building. It's almost as tall as a four-story building, just to let you know how huge it is. I'm not sure this picture does um, great justice to it, you know, because this, I can see the work. And you can see we have some galleries there and... Uh, so, so many things are happening and we're grateful to God for that and thank God for all of you that give and all of you that still keep giving, you know, because we'll never have to raise an offering for this because a lot of us are just faithful. Someone, because sometimes, you don't know the church spends a lot. I mean, the other day, um, we're having a change of venue for NLP. I said, why are we changing the venue? Because the landlord of this place just felt that they should increase the rent, you know. I'm like, oh, but we're already here. We were agreed for a period. We're like, well, we need to increase the money. What do you do? You can complain, you can create problems, or you can solve the problem. So we're like, okay, that's fine. Maybe we should look for somewhere else. You know, either we're going to pay or look for someone else to solve the problems. That always happens. I don't know how to complain. I just know how to fix problems. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, that's very powerful. So, it's going to be beautiful. Hallelujah. So, this Wednesday is also corporate fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. How many of you have not been in church on Wednesday in such a long time? Just wave your hands. In a month, we've not been. Wave your hands. Let me see. Okay, put out your hands. How many of you have been in, on Wednesday in the last one month? Wave your hands, let me see. Uh-huh, I knew that, we, yeah. So, we just keep waving your hands, let me see. You've not been in the last one month. Look around, those that have not been, and say, this Wednesday, there's fasting and prayer. Make sure you come. Exactly. So, this Wednesday, says fasting and prayer. We're going to take the communion. So, make sure you come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I didn't know she's not been in church. You've not been in church. You were not in church last month, Wednesday. You were okay, okay, okay. Praise the Lord. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right, that's really good. That's really good. Um, can we get some testimonies of how the last series impacted you? What has changed? You know, and let me tell you something. You remember that because of the teaching, what well, we had the personal transformation course that finished yesterday. It was life changing. You know, um, I saw I saw you saw the video earlier. People were crying. I mean, not the tears. It's just. Why do people cry? It's a breakthrough moment for them. They, there's a new realization that changes everything. And I'm saying so because the Sunday services are powerful, but a lot of you need deeper work than the Sunday services. You need deeper work. So some of these courses are designed to help you. For example, the business acceleration course is coming up next month. Yeah, and it's two, three days. You will get the opportunity for other people to invest in your business. You get the opportunity to invest in your business, you know, and all of that. And if you want to do that, just put it on... Just that's it. You need to get some of you. It's a paid program. It cost up two hundred thousand, if I if I remember. You know, it's a paid program, and you can pay in bits if you you can pay in bits. So if you want to take it, you can say, okay, I want to pay twenty five thousand right now and move it gradually. But why should you do it? You will learn a lot about how to grow your business. Someone says, oh, but two hundred thousand is a lot for someone that wants to help. The reason why is that you'll be fed every day, and it will be fed at a five star hotel. And that costs a lot of money. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. But when you think of the value, you get mentoring, you get opportunity to get, just imagine you pay 200000 and you get a funding of five or ten million. Then that money is nothing. That money is actually nothing for you. So let's go ahead. Take, take, bring out your phones and do it. All of you online. There's no reason why you should not do it if people from Canada, from Calabar, from Abuja are doing the course. Yesterday when I was teaching the personal transmission course, I found people that were staying awake in Canada all night to contribute to a physical course that was happening in Lagos. And they were watching on Zoom. And sometimes our internet is not the best. But it is still that we can do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So go ahead and plan for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. And all of you that would like to invest into businesses, just let, let us know so that we also can partner with that. And you can also invest into businesses, you know, that way. Okay. Let's get into the teaching today. Let's get into the change today. Will you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11? So we begin a new series. We begin a new series in overcoming what? Overcoming what? Yeah, 
overcoming self-doubt and low self-esteem. Overcoming self-doubt and low self-esteem. Yeah, overcoming self-doubt and low. I, I love the thought services because they're very practical answers, Bible answers to life issues. How many of you have struggled with self-doubt? How many of you are struggling with self-doubt? That's great. How many of you are struggling with a low self-esteem? Nobody. Oh, just so many lies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get one testimony. Brother Zakiki, how are you? You look very handsome in this your gray attire. Sister Zaki is always doing a great job with you anyway. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, good. Who wants to give me a testimony from the last series of teaching? Let's just know what, what happened, how your life changed radically. Yeah. Once again. You were the lady, you were one of the la- I spoke to you, right? You were the lady in black. Were you the lady in black? You said yes. You said no. What's yes, what's no? But one of the cases I spoke to you, were you the, that wasn't you, okay. But you said yes. What is yes? <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. I can't remember what I spoke to you about. So who wants to give a testimony of how this has radically changed your life. Some people are here for the first time. Some people are watching for the first time. If you want to share the link, all of you online and physically, you can go ahead and share the link with your friends. They'll be mightily blessed today. So who wants to share the testimony how this has really helped them? And it's also give me... And let me say something to you. When you're going through a change, one of the ways to make a change accountable is to build a habit and have accountability. Yeah. One of the things you're learning is I focus on what is available and not what is what missing. So you should tell your friend, every time I'm focused on what is what missing, let me, let me know and tune my attention to what is what available. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you want to say something? You have to take the microphone and say something. Let me know how this has really changed you. Yeah. Good afternoon, Pastor B. Good afternoon. So the last chain helped me. I used to focus on what was missing. Wow. And Example. Okay, it was my business, basically. I did not um, see the value of what I had because I was focusing on the negative aspect, yeah. how it wasn't growing. But with the help of your teaching and a couple of people in church, yeah. I have been able to focus on what is available and utilize what I have. And what difference have you noticed? A huge difference. Tell me. I'm more disciplined with my business now. Wow. I'm more... Um, What's the word? I'm more open to people. Like I, I, I want people to help me because okay. I know that I need help. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm focused on what is available, not what is missing. Okay. Who else wants to share a testimony? Let me get some from the middle. You know, follow some from the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why are you tapping her? You know she has a testimony. You know. Oh wow, that's good. That even your friend knows he has a testimony. That's good. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Yeah. Good afternoon. Okay. Um. It's actually um, the last time by teaching and focusing on what's missing and all, and feeling like there's a part you thought about um, feeling like um, people don't help you, like but you thought about. It. So that lady gave a testimony. That was on Mother's Day or something that you gifted her and all. So while I was sitting there, I was like, I tap into this, and all, and to crown you. So what was the problem before? Okay, so I used to feel like people don't help me. So that was a mentality, that people don't help yes, me. Yeah, that was a mentality. I, yes. Okay, so, so what changed? That week, I practiced it. So I asked, and I even got more than what I asked. Wow. Oh. Yes. Wow. So you see, sometimes the way to break your fear is by taking massive action. She, always, she was always thinking nobody's going to help me. And because she thought that way, what happened to her? See, the belief influences actions. So because she thought nobody will help me, what happened? She never asked for help. So what happened? Nobody eventually helped her. And it was a cycle of fulfilling prophecy. But as soon as she changed her mind and said that people are willing to help me, then she began to what? Ask for help. And people began to what? Help her. Praise the Lord. That's really good. Let me get a guy that will share how this has impacted him or her. Let me get a guy that will share this. Oh, there's a lady that wants to share. Okay, let, let me, because she seems so excited. Let me hear. Pastor. Good afternoon. So, two Sundays ago, the Mother's Day, it was my first time here. It was your first time. Oh, wow. What's your name? Joy Karen. Joy Karen. Joy, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And when you were telling us to have faith, 
I practiced it while we were outside. Um, I won the bag. No, first of all, the lady was calling numbers and then it got to my, t I mean, it got to the end. I was like, oh, am I not going to get anything? And then um, she said the next one would be the luxury gift. And then I said, I'm going to be the first person and then my sister is going to be the next. And that was just what happened. It was me, the first person, and I won the luxury gift. I was the only one who won the luxury gift that day. So I was so excited and I got interviewed. So that's what I want to share. That's good. That's good. That's good. Is there any, any man that wants to share how this teaching has really impacted you? Men, don't do this to me. <laughs> what? What? Men never talk. What well, that's a stereotype. Men here talk. Give this to this guy. I've been in the, in the teaching. I've even come for the teaching. This is your first time. I haven't come for the teaching. This is your first time. No, I've, I've been coming for the teaching. You've been coming for the teaching. So what, what, what has really struck with you? There's always a guy that used to talk. The guy that said that he likes them girls big. Are you the one? Okay. Where's that guy? Where is he? He has not spoken to us in a while. Okay. All the men are not going. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. I mean, you can take the microphone for him if he, if he doesn't have anything to say. You know, because... I want someone. So, any man that wants to share how this thing has personally affected you, I mean, that's a lady. I want a man first now. There's a man. Okay, there's a man over there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I knew you were going to come through. I knew we were going to come through. I knew we were going to come through. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yo, so this has always been my story right from. You know, school when I was in campus. So I started business and I was doing well. Then when I finished school, I have to move to Akure and God gave me houses. So, but after that, I had some issues and I lost everything. But that season when I lost everything, I never sat once to think about what was wrong. All I thought was, what can I do to move ahead? So that's, I'm a photographer. So that season, I felt like, okay, I can use this season to learn and upgrade myself. So when my friends are working during the day, I learn online. Then when they are sleeping, I practice what I've learned. Then wow. I use their system during, the day, during that night to edit a little pictures I've taken during the day and stuff like that. Then if we to fast forward to now, we are probably running one of the biggest photography brand in Nigeria. Now, where's, where's, this, where's this video? Okay, okay, yeah, continue please, yeah. So it has always been like this. So I think about my growth. Any moment, probably work are not coming in. I don't just sit down and think about like, why is this thing happening? I just look at this is that I is can so use great. it to upgrade myself. So after that, it's going to be another phase. So I just believe that, okay, when things are not working, the best thing I can do is to think about what I can do to improve myself and add value. Praise God. Really good. Really good. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Yeah, I don't want us to keep stay, stay late. I don't want to stay late. That's why I'm trying to jump. All right. So dealing with self-doubt... And um, maybe, Calipi, don't go. What does self-doubt look like for you? Let's start with that question. This is like a big Bible study class. What does self-doubt look like? I'm going to ask of you because I saw you have a question. Who, who is in front here with the microphone? Rashi, get a microphone and bring it to her. Yeah, what does self-doubt look like for you? Yeah. Because some people don't know what self-doubt is like. So I can define it, but I can ask for life experience. What does self-doubt look like for you? Good afternoon, Hester. Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> so for me, self-doubt looks like when you constantly seek validation from people. 
you constantly seek validation for people. Mm. Um, Give me an example. So, for instance, um, it's a feeling that you feel you're not enough. It's a feeling that you. You're not. Give me an example of where you constantly seek validation okay, for people. Tell, so, tell me. For instance, you dress up, you look at yourself in the mirror. Deep down, you know you look you look good, but you don't feel it, you don't see it. So you have to keep asking maybe your friends, people around you, do you like what I'm wearing? Does it look good? Do you think it looks good? And when one or two people say so to you, you don't accept, you ask more people. You ask more people because you, you don't see yourself as enough. So wow. you keep looking for that validation in yeah. other people. Who understands this? Wow. Self-doubt. Oh my goodness. Okay. What does self-doubt look like for you? Yeah, let's give an example. What does it look like for you? Yep. Yeah. The lady, the lady, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, no, no. The one in the middle. 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 Oh. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. So self-doubt for me looks like when you don't trust yourself enough. So what that's like is... Will you have the microphone closer to your mouth? Mm-hmm. Self-doubt looks like when you don't trust yourself enough when you're making decisions. My follow-up question is this. What has self-doubt stopped you from achieving? Yeah, continue. Okay, so, for instance, you, you want to make a decision, right? In your head, you know what it plays out like. You know what you want to do. But then, when you practice self-doubt is when you're not sure if that's going to yield the results that you expect. And so you want to... What's the difference between I'm not sure and I'm self-doubting? You lack faith. Oh, you have faith. The reason why is that they're they're different. I mean, one can happen. Everybody becomes unsure from time to time. But when you have self-doubt, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. Everybody wants validation from time to time. But people that seek validation, it's almost like a drug. If you don't get it, then something is wrong with me. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so in that exact example that you just gave... Which example? with how you want to you keep asking like so basically, so what do you keep asking it's like anxiety or, what do you keep asking i keep asking uh is this right like am i going to do this is this going to work out is this the right thing to do is are this the right amount of people to work with all of that okay okay awesome yeah. okay let me let me get to give it to spiral it's behind you yeah i saw you the way you just checked what did you have self-doubt yeah my guy What's your own story of self-doubt? Um, I never really thought that I could be something in life, you know, because my dad, when growing up, would tell me I can't make it, you know. So, so your dad, started, your dad would tell you you can't make it. Yeah, he used to tell me that. Uh, I wanted to notice his story because in his story you can see where self-doubt comes from. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you, I will doubt myself even when people tell me that. Oh, you can sing. I never really believed that I could sing until I got to hear it from a lot of people, like big people. For example, when um, Banky W, for example, told me that guy, you can sing, and that was when I started believing that, oh, I think I can actually sing because so, so when you have sell downs, what you already have is nothing until someone affirms it to you. So you keep on the value yourself except to get some help fantastic so on the bank he said and let me say this to you a lot of you here are young but some of you are parents look at me most of the time confidence comes from the father and i'm saying this to single parents be careful if you're a single mom this is why confidence comes from the father because fathers generally overlook mistakes and praise you when you do well mothers generally praise you when you do well but talk a lot also about your mistakes and there's something even though it's from a place of love there's something about you talking a lot about what i do wrong that just makes me feel as if i'm not good enough and that's why you know for him it was double catastrophe because the person that should inspire self-confidence in him is the person that's actually doing something that is killing his self-confidence. And I really understand what that is. Yes, continue, please. Um, yeah, I'm over it now. Though, and when you had self-doubt, what couldn't you do? Um, Did you notice you didn't push a lot? 
Yeah, it restricted me from having certain conversations. That's what I'm saying. Once you have self, that it limits performance and potentials. I, I was literally hiding behind my partner. To, he talks for me. Like, I can't have direct conversations. You see what I'm saying? So the reason, I'm going to show you why we're teaching this today. So one of the reasons we're teaching this today is this. And let me say something. Some Someone said, well, this is so simple and this is basic. Some of the issues that affect your Christianity are some of these things. You just find out that you cannot move in your potential. Question, how many of you know you can sing here? Raise up your hands. Why are you not singing? Because of some of you don't want to pursue that part. I understand that. But a lot of you have self-doubt. Praise God. Let's take one more opinion. Let, let's take one more perspective. One more perspective. I've seen you, but I want someone that, that doesn't really talk a lot. There's a, there's a guy. Oh, yes. Give the guy and the lady in front of him. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Can you take off your glasses so I can see your face? Is that how you protect your self-doubt? <laughs> you, most of you don't know people that wear dark shit are very shy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I could relate with what Spiro was talking about. So my own self-doubt started from my dad. To him, I was a failure. So Why were you a failure to him? I was... He said I, couldn't, I, was, I wasn't like him. I'm not able to achieve anything that he has achieved. I'm not but you were a child. What have they achieved as a child? I don't know. I want to teach you something else. Sometimes, parents do those things to motivate you. But they rather crush you. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Very down because I, I used to sing. So when I started singing and me, always made me happy so whenever he, I played for him he would say was he a singer? no you say you played for him? yeah like I played for him like I played for the song for him to listen okay he says no this is a disgrace you're a failure you should leave this this is not what I want for you this is a disgrace a failure so you ask him am I a failure because I'm doing something different or because you know I'm failure in this what did he say? or you couldn't have that conversation? I couldn't because I I had to, he stayed away from me. So I had to drop music and I, and I had to con concentrate on school, finishing school. Finished. At the same time, I started photography. At the same thing, he started saying, this is not what I want for you. You are a failure. And I'm talking to you currently now. I'm also one of the top photographers in Lagos. So, and I'm doing well for myself. But as I'm talking currently, he's still saying, you're a failure. And, uh, have you asked him why he thinks you're a failure? You know why he thinks you're a failure. Have you, tell me why. I have asked him. Yeah. But what I can see from it is he wants me to be more. More what? That's what I, that's what, that is. Let me tell you what I think. What, what, sometimes it's the fact that he wants you to have a nine to five job. Is that what he wants? Yes. He wants you to wear tie. Every time you go and see him, wear a tie. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. There's a lady in front. Yeah. And we're going to read from the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Lady, yeah, self-doubt. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, okay, so last year, I got a job as a business development manager for a lab. And when I saw the revenue, I was like, I've never seen this kind of money before in my accounts. How am I supposed to make it for a company? So I told my sister, and she was like, wow, that money is huge. Where are you supposed to get that money from? And I told her, OK, I'm already job hunting because I'm not going to last. Before they fire me, let me wow. look for another job. <laughs> and I keep talking to my sister. my sister. She's my younger sister, but she's my biggest motivator. If I'm feeling down, I call my sister. She's the best person to lift me up. Yeah. So she says, yes, we've never seen this kind of money before. It's not entering our accounts. It's entering the company's accounts. So whatever other people have been doing, learn from them, and you can push through. So you know, I lasted... Hold on, please. I wanted to notice something. They didn't fire her. They didn't query her. She began to work... The reason why is that this story applies in a lot of things. How many of you are here and... 
you'll be like, well, no. Let me even give an example. How many of you don't even bother to apply for some certain contract because you think it's beyond you? You don't even bother to apply for some certain jobs because it's big to belong to you. Let me give you a good example. How many of you here, you know in your heart you should be a cell leader, but you say, ah, not me. Eh? No. Did they have not do something wrong? They're not going to put me to pastor. Do you see, do you see how cell leader limit potentials? And the reason why I'm saying so is that I know you're really praying, but maybe what is wrong with you is that you have a lot of self-doubt. This lady has a great job. You know, it even affects relationships. Where someone, you know, you just think you cannot love back. It affects you in business. One of the things you will notice when you have self-doubt is this. You will procrastinate a lot. Yes or no? You will procrastinate because you are afraid. What have you meant to have done this year that you have pushed and now it's April? That lady said, ew. <laughs> because there's a lot of self-doubt. What spiritual steps should you have taken? You know, let me tell you, have you seen people that say that, I, I don't want to be a Christian, I don't want to see myself, well, I know I cannot make it through. Ah, I can't too. Because they don't even trust that God can give them the ability to live the Christian life. So back to you, my sister. Okay, so um, six months later, I yeah. got a letter from the HR. It's called a meet expectation letter. So it's a letter practically saying I've met expectation for six months. And you met to, the expectation? Yes. They were going to confirm me a full staff. And a year later, which is um, this year, I have been fully confirmed, promoted, and the CEO is always calling me. You have to tell your colleagues what you are doing. Because you only came in last year and you've surpassed almost... I, I, I want to ask you a question. This is a very fantastic... Let's appreciate her for that, Papa Stone. I want to notice something. I want to notice... Sorry, my voice. You need to pray for my voice. You can see it, you know, draining out. I want to notice something. Number one, she had someone that supported her. But when did the change come for you? What's your name, please? My name is Sophie. Sophie, when did the change come from you? Where did you go from sell that to self belief? Okay, um, I think it was when I started working extra hard because I believed I, I'm someone that I, I do not like plenty hard work. I like um, what works. <laughs> I'd rather. I'd rather not walk extra, extra, just do the work, but I had to put myself out there. I had to make sure I visited. If I'm supposed to visit my clients... You know, you know what I'm what? saying? There's something you've missed that I can see, but you'd, you're not saying. What changed that made you begin to work harder? Well, I got... My sister motivated me. To what? What changed? What did that motivation do to your mind? Uh, it made me believe I can do it. That's it. That's what I was going to. The, see, the reason why you're not taking massive actions, because from what she said, I don't do hard work because I can't believe that I'm even meant for it. But now, she finds herself doing a lot of hard work. And the reason why she's doing hard work is because of what? Because there's a change in her belief that I can do it. There's a way you sell when you know you will sell out. There's a way you sell when you know you don't sell out. So the difference is, it's how are you going to move from a place of self-doubt to a place of what? Self-belief. So let's read from the Bible. Second, and let me tell you something. You will be surprised that one of the biggest attacks on the Christians is self-doubt. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Glory to God. Verse 3. See what the Bible says. He says, I fear lest by any means... As Satan beguiled Eve through the subtlety of your mind, sorry, subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let's read the Passion Translation. That says it very clearly. Let's read the Passion Translation. Yeah. 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 Passion Translation. He says, but now I'm afraid. Just as Eve was deceived by what? Satan clever lies. 
that your thought become corrupted and you lose what? You lose your single-hearted devotion and your pure love. The point is this. is the lies that corrupt the thoughts and the thought makes you lose your passion. So, let's go back to where you started from. What did, the, what did the devil tell Satan? He told Satan this. Sorry, what did Satan tell Eve? That's the right thing to say. Satan told Eve, if you want to be like God, do what? Eat this fruit. The question is this. Were they not like God already? He made him doubt who he was. Self-doubt. That was the first example of self-doubt in the Bible. He told Eve, if, if you, uh, let me tell you something. That's why many of you need to bleach your skin. Because something that's confused you thoroughly that you cannot be color, you can't be beautiful in your color. So many of you are in this race of performance. That's why many of you buy things you don't need to buy. Because Satan has told you that if you don't carry a purse that is Louis Vuitton, if you don't drive a car that is a Range Rover, even though you cannot afford it, then you are not the person. And you bought it. So you leave your vision and start chasing shadows. Who knows what I'm talking about? You leave your vision and start ch- chasing shadows. In fact, many of you, the reason why you are in an abusive relationship is because of self-doubt. Because Satan has told you that if these people are not your friends, these movers and shakers, these classy people, if they are not your family friends, then you are not among the reigning families in Ikoi. And they will, and they will treat you like trash. But you endure the trash because you don't believe yourself. What else I'm talking about? Let's read the scripture again. Oh, wow. It's getting hot right now. Did you prepare for this one? Many of you cannot even say, I've never traveled before. Because Satan makes you feel as if, ah. What is wrong? Let me tell you something. How does traveling add to your future? If it's not your career path? If I've traveled, great. They would have lived abroad before, came back to Nigeria, and they're very useless. You need to ask, the things I give you self esteem issues, I didn't know, you know, things like, oh, this food is here. You don't know what it is, oh. But you cannot ask. So that you don't look bush. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When I was a student pastor, one of our leaders, he used to like women. He got born again. He now told me, he had this car as a student. He told me that, do you know how I used to know if girls are really honest or not, either they are really too sure they are forming. I say, how do you know? He said, Pastor, sit down in front. He sat, sat down in front. It was very cold. He said, this AC is very cold. I said, thank you, Pastor. He said, what I do is that I block all the vents in the car. And I open all the vents in the car into that seat. So it will be freezing. He said, if you see a girl from a poor background, I'll say, are you cold? He said, no, I'm perfect. <laughs> I mean, we were young, we were young, we were young, we were young, you know. He said, no, 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 are you cold? He said, what is there, are you cold? He said, I will increase the AC again. I said, are you cold? He said, no, I'm perfect. Meanwhile, if you watch her leg, she's, ooh, ooh, she's shaking. Glory to God. Self-doubt does not allow the authentic you come out. It keeps limiting you. So many of you are in a race to be like somebody else. You are in a race to talk like somebody else. You are in a race to do something like somebody else. See what the Bible says. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. See what the Bible says. And this, the first case of self that was in the Bible. Satan told Eve. It says, if you want to be. Is he want to be like God? But she was already like God. She was made in the image and in the kindness of God. Guess what? In trying to be who she was, she lost who she was. You lose who you are. Look what the Bible says. And the reason why is that that's why many of you that are single, you say, are you single? I'm not single. But you're not dating. You cannot even admit to the fact that you're not single. Stay with your facts. 
see what the Bible says. I'm telling you, some of you are going to church now. One guy that likes you, that's very calls you. Where are you? He said, mm, I'm just somewhere. Why can't I'm in church? When you have sell that, you always pretend. And this is why they think you're lying. You always pretend to be who you are not for people to accept you. So you become an actor. And it's not a girl's thing. It's a guy's thing also. So they come and see the guy. And you, you paint all this picture about how you have this car. But it's never your car. It's your friend's car. He said, let me go and pick you. You that you have no car. And I say, and I say ah, don't you have a car? No, I actually have a car, but it broke down. I just sold it to the mechanic. You know, listen, you have no car. She needs to know the truth. That's where you are. Even in marriages, even in marriages, couples. One year to marriage, you know, I love marriage because when you stay in for a long time, you begin to know there's no point acting. See what the Bible says again. Let's go. He says, I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by what? By serpent, by serpent clever lies. What was the lie? The lie was that you need to eat this fruit to be like God. The question is that what lie have you been told that for you to be perfect, you have to do this? Let me tell you something there. Eh? There's no perfect human being. Perfection is a myth. And let me, can I be honest with you? That's why when I get sick and tired, when I see pastors trying to be perfect. Because when you can look through them, you can see their imperfections. Nobody is perfect than God. Nobody. A lot of you are here. That's why you're not growing spiritually. You know why you're growing spiritually? Because growth requires you to be authentic. Growth requires to be what? Authentic. But if you have self-doubt, you are always hiding who you are because you don't want people to see who you are. You don't be speaking American accent that you don't have. So you move American accent to Asian accent to Igbo accent, you come back to Lagos accent, you come back to... Where are you? Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, as an, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know so in the same language you're hearing British accent you're hearing American accent then you hear Lagos accent then you hear China accent you hear all these things and the simple thing is that the, because we're going to deal with this this month and I'm saying that this is what it is why are you becoming you're becoming something else many of you by your values that stresses you not wear but when you're with your friend, you must try to wear those dress because you don't know how to tell them that I don't feel comfortable in this. This is what I feel comfortable in. And let me tell you something. When people want to get into sin, they use sin to oppress you. And you know why you feel oppressed? Because you yourself, you are not confident of who you are. Someone say, ah, I've told you. Eh, see what cheap did for me. See what cheap. Just look at her and see the car. And the rest is oppressing you. And you can't say that. So you think because you have a car, but you sleep around, that you think you're better than me. You don't have the courage to say that. I may not be the richest pastor. I'm grateful. You don't understand. I focus on what is missing, not what is what. I focus on what is available, not what is missing. Have you not noticed? They say you don't have backside. Those that have backside, they say you don't have front side. Those that have front side, they say you don't have shape. Those that have shape, they say you don't have complexion. Those that have complexion, they say your legs are, your hair are short. If those that have hair, they say they are too hairy. What will we do to make you happy? Glory to God. The question is this. This is the question. What is the lie Satan is telling you? You know this is so powerful? Can I, can I, can I, can I say something very powerful? Do you know the, tra- the, te- the, te- the temptation of Jesus was also focused on self-doubt? What did he say? He says, if you are the son of God, perform. This thing about self that had been from ages, when Satan eventually tempted Jesus, what did he say? 
He says, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. Jump down. Let the angel catch you. It was a question that you're not what you say you are. You are an imposter. This is an imposter syndrome. So I want to ask you. So you really think because you're not married, you're not attractive? Does that make sense? Was just not attractive? Was he married? Because sometimes what you used to define your success are the things you put in your mind. If this is blessing you, it's time to tweet it and put hashtag PB speaks. It's time to tweet it and put hashtag PB speaks. Why is she crying? Is she okay? You know, okay? It's touching her. I don't want to laugh. It's um, something serious. Come, 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 come. Let me hug you. Because I've noticed you've been crying for a while. Come. Come, come, come. It's okay. So, why are you crying? Because I'm always waiting. Tell me. Because I'm always waiting for a confirmation to be sure of if I know who I am. Like in the office, they tell me to do something. I know that I know what I'm doing, but I'm still shaky. I'm afraid till maybe someone from senior management has to say or agree with me. And I'm like, eh, hey, I know what I'm doing. Or random, like with my body, so many different aspects. So like, it's so much. I know that it's the mindset. And you, 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 know, you know what that does to you? So because you wait for mine, let me tell you what they do. Ladies, I want to look at the trick. Even guys, look at the trick. So... Any guy that wants to take advantage of you, can he take advantage of you? Because he knows you'll listen to his words, even though he's lying. Has that happened in your past relationships? Has that happened in your past relationships? Use the microphone and tell me. Yes. So I want to ask you, what is going to change for this to change? I need to be sure of who I am. You need to be sure of who you are. So what is wrong with you that you need to be sure of? That I'm actually intelligent. I know, I mostly know what I'm doing. So why do you need to be sure of that? Is that not who you are? <laughs> now, I just want to know why you need to be sure. What, what, remind me your name again. I always forget it. Dami. That means that your name? You need to be sure. Do you need to be sure about that? So I need to be sure that you're like God looks at. I want to ask you a question. Hold on. Look at something. Does God, God is God intelligent? Yes or no? Yes. Can an intelligent God make non-intelligent human beings? <laughs> so if God made you, he, how can he make something? Don't you know that if you're not intelligent, then God is stupid. <laughs> Let me give an example. Have you done assignment before and someone got zero by 100? What does he tell you about the person? He's a stupid dullard. So if God makes you and you're zero by 100, the maker that wrote the exam, who is he? And because I know that my God is not stupid, then I'm not what? I cannot not be intelligent. He even now said in his word, I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Give me a high five, Joe. Are you intelligent? Say the microphone. Are you intelligent? Yes, I am. Give me another high five. You don't even see. You don't even know. Another high five. I never give me a high five. Give me an high five. Is that it? Give me a high five. Give me a high five. I just got hundred million dollars. Are you intelligent? Yes, I am. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Walk intelligent. Walk, walk intelligently back to your seats. Thank you.
Let me tell you something you must tell yourself. Praise God. I wish I had someone that was a very top, maybe top, top person in your industry. Anybody like that here? Maybe top in music, you're an actor, actress, banking, very, very top. You've moved very big people. You know, anybody like that here? You, which industry are you in? I'm just saying nonsense. Are you? you, you? She, she did, she did. Okay, I, I, I'm very serious right now. Anybody like that here? I, I want to ask you a question, that's why. Anybody? There's someone at the back. I, I don't know. Please give him the microphone. I don't know where he is, but I, I would love to. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I can see him. I need the camera to help me see his face so that I can talk to him clearly. So, so which industry have you, which industry or which sector is that? Healthcare. Healthcare. So you've met with the Minister of Health, all the top doctors and all of those things? Yeah. What, which locally or internationally or also? Uh, both. Both. I need, I need you to see his face because I want to ask him a very important question. Very good. You've done both internationally. Some of the ministers of health, all of them. Have you noticed that some of the doctors are the most irresponsible personally? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> I think that's correct, yes. The reason I'm showing you this is this. What looks like perfection to you as soon as you come close, you will see the cracks. That's all I want to just say to you. It's, it's from afar that it looks so perfect. Some of the doctors you know, the way they smoke, the way they chase women, smoking, and they were telling you that, you know that smoking is not good for your health, it can cause cancer, this and this and this and this and this. But the way they smoke, tell me one experience that's been very disappointing with a doctor. Sorry, say that again. Tell me one, one experience I've been very disappointing with one of the doctors. Or um, health professional, health, top people. Well, I think, for example, there, there's something going on about saying that doctors are very flirtatious. Um, I think from medical school, you can see it, and also smoking as well. And, you, I mean, you'll be, you'll be surprised that a lot of doctors, maybe through stress, are drug addicts as well. They're, so... They're, Sorry, I mean they abuse drugs. They, they, well, they abuse drugs, you know. Who else will? And you know they have access to the drugs. You know. Yeah, I, don't worry. I know what you're saying. You know, we all understand. The reason why I'm saying so is that. So you feel, I want to tell you how you feel. You feel as if, it, it's just like sometimes when you think people around that skin color are better than you are. All you need to have a conversation and say that all of us are the same. Praise God. But the problem is not who is better, who is not better. That's what I'm going to. The problem is that you've believed a lie. And the lie is that for you to be perfect, for you to do well, you have to be this certain way. What you need to be is not become another person. What you need to be become the best version of yourself. Let's read Luke chapter 4. And let's look at the temptation of Jesus Christ. Dealing with what? Self-doubt. Can I get three people that can tell me how self start limited you, how it cost you pain, how it reduced you, how it changed your life? I want people to tell me so, such stories. There's someone at the far back that needs to tell that story. Thank you. At the far back. Thank you. Anybody else here? There's a lady up front here that wants to tell me a story also. Yeah, lady in white. There's a microphone close to you. This camera, can you get her? Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, so sometime last year, I, so I'm an events planner. You're what? I'm an events planner. Okay. Yes. So sometime last year, I, um, you know, I spoke to one of my friends and I put in for a contract to plan an end of year party for, um, a certain company and it is quite, you know, a well-known company in finance. Um, so the thing is I've done things like that before, but with this one, I was, quite anxious about it um, and frankly speaking I was very doubtful of myself um, and I realized that when you know they I entered into like the top few people that they um, shortlisted 
And when it was time for me to kind of talk about my brand and basically say, well, this is me, this is my company, this is why you should use me, I obviously I didn't get the contract. And then when I went back later on and I was speaking to my friend, he said, you know, you didn't come off as very confident um, in, you know, in your ability. You see the stuff. problem? So the problem is not, you would think they did something to you, but in reality, you did not come off confident. And because of that, they could not give you what? The contract. Can I be honest with you? Some of you that say you're mightily delayed, you don't come out attractive because of the self-doubt. How's that to say? <laughs> What's making you dance? Every time he seems like he's like me, he seems as if like me. He doesn't like you. Praise God. Okay, that's one. That's someone at the far back. Yes, can you go ahead and the, late, the person at the far? Can you come forward just because of the camera distances? Just come forward quickly. We're, we're going to close in five minutes. Yeah, I know that you want to stay to tomorrow. Yeah, I saw it, I saw someone tweet on Twitter. I wish possibly can just take this foot service and teach for ten hours. I said, Wow, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, you can speak from there. That's fine. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, so, um, basically, the self-doubt, um, so, um, it's about uh, my education. Yeah. So, something that has been affecting me, like, right from um, little age. So, I do not have a degree yet, and because they could not sponsor me. So, because of that, I just feel like I can't get any good thing. Even when I pray, even when people make, um, share testimonies on next level, I just, I just feel like some kind of testimony cannot come to me. Okay. So there are two dimensions. There's obviously natural limitation, which is that you don't have a degree you have to deal with. So why have you not gone back to school? Okay, so funny thing is that I've tried four times. Four times? Yes. Um, well, how did you try four times? Okay, so I tried, the first time I tried um, going back, I, I could not... How, how? How did okay, you try? So you wrote an exams? Indie. Yes, I wrote exam. I didn't get in. So, so what exam is the problem? Is it jam? Is it post jam? No. Is it what the code no, It's HND. So I did ND. Okay. So I was supposed to go for HND. Yeah. But I could not go because my parents could not afford. Okay. So I went to I tried again for an ND in yeah. another school in Lagos so that I can work and also go to yeah. school. Yeah. But I didn't get in. Okay. So but the next year I tried to go back to my school where I finished my ND, yeah. they gave me admission. I paid for acceptance fee, but I could not pay school fee, so okay. I didn't go. That was the second time. And the third time was me trying now. And I, I did first session, and I could not go back for second section. Why? Because of finance. Too. Okay, I will tell you what the problem is. The problem is this. You don't have a clear strategy. You obviously have a financial problem that is holding you back. So where did you hope to get the money from when you were going to school? Work. Work. So what happened to work? That you so, couldn't pay again. So I feel like I can't get. Um, no, no, no. Don't tell me what you feel like. Answer my question. You couldn't. You paid for the first term. Why couldn't you pay the second one? You say I, you're going to get money from work. Are you not still working? Yeah, I'm still working, but they're not paying me much because I do not have a degree. But that's the thing because you still don't have a clear financial strategy. Yeah, that's what it is. You still don't have a clear financial strategy. Let me give you some things you could have done. Number one. Could you have looked for someone that will give you an education loan and say, if you borrow me this money for, for my HND, if I finish in two years, I can pay you back three years after I'm done. This one can do that for you. Number two, could you have looked for a scholarship that can pay half or part of your tuition? That's another thing. Number three, could you do a business? Because business doesn't know if you have scholarship or not, if you have education or not, that can bring that. So the key thing here is that there's no clear financial strategy. So I think it's more than self-doubt. It's the fact that there's no clear financial strategy. And I think that's what you have to work on right now. Okay, thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, someone, someone was going to share. Oh, finally, you want to share? Oh, fantastic. We have this guy that was meant to share earlier, but he refused to share. But now his self-doubt is gone and he's going to share. Okay, um, mine was when I was back, then, back in universities, med school. So, um, Are you a doctor? I'm not practicing. 
you're not you're a non-practicing doctor. Yes. So um, there was this lecturer that always made me feel like I wasn't good enough. So um, it sort of affected me, and even up to date, sometimes I might even know the answer to something. I might know um, how to solve a particular problem, but because I am scared that I might not be able to get it. You know your voice is shaking as you're speaking? Yes. Why? Self-doubt. I can see it because that's why you're... So hold on, look at him. Can you see his clinging in his mouth? That, that it's was... not shy. You see his clinging in his mouth? You can see his mouth moving. It's, it, it's not, it can't control it. This is also why I put stammer. I hope you know that. Because for him, his cells start to exhibit himself in his body. So when he gets there, his tissues, and there's a lot of tension. Then he loses the words and it begins to come off freeze. How has this affected your career? What do you do? Um, I'm into business now. I just literally avoid anything that would have to make me um, speak to people in public or administer to people because I am afraid I will not do well. Even when you asked me earlier, it's not like I didn't have something to say, but I was just sort of feeling like I would probably flop when I start to talk. So I just kept quiet. Stand up, stand up. Stand up. You're a very handsome man. I need you to accept it because we're rejecting it. Was it just your teacher that said all those things to you or one of your parents also was that way? It was just my teacher. My parents are actually quite supportive and they would encourage you to do better. They were very encouraging. Yes. If one teacher made you feel this way, I'm another teacher. Can I? Yeah. Can I help you change it? So the question is this. How bad do you want to change? I really want to change, and that's why I took this step. I would have, I just, I would have just kept quiet throughout the service, but I wanted to try something new. You know what? I'm just going to the time because if I'm going to stay with him, it's going to be about five, seven minutes, but there's no time to do that. That's something we did yesterday in the next in, in the transformation course class. Maybe we should try it together. Maybe this will help. I want you to close your eyes. Not everybody, him close his eyes. Close your eyes. You can give anybody else a microphone. I thought you had the mood playing. Now you are playing the keyboard. Just put on the mood. Yeah. No, no, drop your hands. You don't have to do anything, you know. Close your eyes. Think about all you've lost because of this self-doubt. Think about in five years' time what you will have lost because of self-doubt. How to get married will become a problem. How your children will pick it from you. How you'll never be able to close big amounts of money because of self-doubt. And you may end up going back to live with your parents. How you'll never marry someone that you really love because you'll settle for someone that does not love you but, you know, can accept you. Think about the next 10 years and your children are growing and you're seeing the same self-doubt exhibits in their life. Think about when you become 20. Now, this is about 50. Think about, and these issues are multiplied in your life. And think about it when you're 60. And you sit down, you're full of regrets of all the things you didn't do at 35 at 37, at 40, at 42, at 45, at 50, at 51, at 55, at 56. Tell yourself that's not me. Look at me. Use the microphone. Did you see what you could have, what that could do to you? Close it to your mouth? Yes, sir. You did? Yes. Is that the future you want? No, sir. 
Is that enough for you to change? Yes, sir. What did you see when you closed your eyes? I saw perpetual failure. Tell me exactly things you saw. What did, what did you see your family like? What is your love life like? What is your business like? What did you see with your business? What did you see? Fear. Fear to actually take on big things because... Um, and because so of that, what happened to your business? Everything feels like... Your business failed? Yes. So what were you living when your business failed? I'd have to go back to uh, begging for crumbs from even my junior ones and my parents. You had to... You thought about... You know the reason why? Your mind is not lying to you. It's telling you what the future will be if you continue this part. But let's look at another future. Close your eyes. Think of a future where today you broke self-doubt. Think of what you began to say, what you began to do. Think of because you broke self-doubt, you could now talk, you could express yourself. You, you began to do big things. Think of how your business now grew by times 100 in five years. Think of what your children had to say about you, what your wife had to say, how you walked up to the woman of your dreams and you spoke to her. Think of 10 years' time and you've grown in your self confidence and you're double, you're triple. Everybody's looking up to you. Think of who you're hanging out with. Think of all of these great people you're hanging out with. Now think of 20 years time. Your success has not just doubled, it has quadrupled. Your company is not doing like $200 million. And all the dreams you had in your heart, see it happen. See you even writing the book on how to break your self-doubt and talking about this. I wanted to shout, that is my future. Open your eyes. Take the microphone. What did you see? I Hold saw, it closer. I saw myself um, leaving my footprints on the sands of time. Keep talking. I saw myself uh, making impact in my business area. I saw myself... Did you notice his mouth is not clenching again? Yeah. Why are you crying? You're crying because you're going into another state and your mouth is starting to clench again. Did you see how he's moving from state to state? Why are you crying? I, I wish um, I had like thought about this or maybe done things differently before now. You wish you thought about this what? Like this metamorphosis. Like I wish I had like changed. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I yeah? wish I had moved away from this self doubt to what I feel in my spirit right now earlier. Probably I would have not missed some of the opportunities that I did miss. So you're feeling some feeling of regret, right? Yes, sir. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. You know what? Maybe if you never had a self doubt, I'll never talk to you on the microphone. I know there were bad things they did to you, but it's all adding up to your beautiful story. What I need you to stay is to stay in that place and just stay in that place where you think. And say, that can never be me. This is me. Yes, sir. What are you going to do this week? I'm going to take a leap. And what try leap is that? Some of the things I've not done before. What have you not done before? I, I actually shy away. Like, when I, I have friends and probably they start to do well, people that I know that could even be of assistance to me. You stay away from them. I stay away from them. I'm just showing you how self that sabotages you. So, you, some of you think your friends stay away from you. The truth is that you stay away from them. Because when you go there, there's a way you feel that you don't want to feel. What do you do in church? What do you do in church? Is this your church? Yes, it is. How long have you been coming? Um, I've not been very uh, regular. But Why? Because I, I was sort of angry. Why were you angry? 
Okay, so this year, um, after December, I made a promise to myself that I was going to be more regular. So before now, I used to go to different churches, so I told myself I would become more regular in Harvesters. And um, even during the wine press, I volunteered. So why were you angry? I thought probably getting close to God was going to help me solve some of my problems, this included, but it looked as if um, it got worse. So, did, did you see? Because the self that makes him see everything, he keeps focusing on what is missing, not what is available. You know what I think you should do? I can't control all aspects of your life, and I'm not able to control anything at all. But what I think you should do is that number one, I think you should join the Austrian department or greatest department. Yeah. You're going to feel like dying one million times. <laughs> but you're going to grow. The first few times you do it, you'll be like, ah, ooh, 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 ooh. But by the 10th time, you'll feel comfortable. So I think you should join the greatest department. You should start next Sunday. You know. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm doing? I'm trying to push him. I'm trying to push him. So when people are coming, be the first guy they meet. Hey, welcome to church. You look amazing. Welcome to church. You look beautiful. Yeah. You, you feel a bit afraid, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? Yes. But question, do you want to see that picture you saw in 20 years' time? Every time you feel afraid, remind yourself of what you saw. You'll yes, go sir. forward. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Praise God. Let's stand on our feet and pray. Were you blessed today? Self-doubt, self-doubt, self-doubt. And a lot of us struggle with it. A lot of us struggle with it. I mean, look at that very handsome guy. Where's that guy again? Come, let me give you a hug. Come, come, come. 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 Such. You know, you know why you tripped? Because we were anxious, right? Uh, yeah. You see the self doubt here? Why is this hand shaking? What? I'm better than I used to be, so it's a gradual phase. I'll, I'll finally be out of it. No, 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 no. The moment you make the decision, you are out. Yeah. So today is the day you are out. Yeah. Yeah. Say something. Tell, tell, just say something. I'm really glad to be here and I thank God for your life, sir. Because uh, being on that, your administration has really helped me a whole lot. I'm really very grateful. Just look at all the thousands of people you are addressing right now. <laughs> Even online, people are like, can I get his number? I would like to date him. Can I get his number? You see the eyes in the hole now, like today, dude. You're a great guy, right? Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you once more. Well, thank you because we have the opportunity to see life change in this service. Well, thank you because the opportunity to heal people and help dissolve things. Lord, I'm asking you today that this will produce so much faith in people that they'll begin to do what they could not do before. They will pursue their dreams. They will fall in love again. They will repair their relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make a shout of victory. Praise God.